Hi, today is Thursday, April the 9th, and we're going to consider together the events that took place on the Thursday before our Lord Jesus died on the cross. As we've talked about the previous days of Holy Week, uh, there's been a break in the action every night when Jesus and his disciples leave the city of Jerusalem to go back out to Bethany. But from here on, there is no break in the action in the events leading up to the cross. Once they begin the Passover together on Thursday, there is no stopping until our Lord breathes his last on the cross tomorrow. Today, we're going to consider just a little of that last evening that he had with his disciples around the table. And tomorrow, we're going to talk about his betrayal, his trial, his crucifixion. Uh, on Thursday, Jesus had his disciples make preparation for the Passover supper. And then the 13 of them, that's Jesus and the 12, including Judas, sat down together for that meal. I'm going to read to you from John chapter 13. beginning with verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he'd come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper he laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Now skipping down to verse 12. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I've done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you also should do just as I have done for you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I'm telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one who I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Now, there is so much going on here. There's so much significance in the Lord Jesus' words, in his actions, in the, symbol, in the symbolism of the meal that they're sharing, and how that symbolism is really redefined by what he's about to do on the cross. And he goes on in John chapters 14 through 17, in this extended conversation with his disciples in that upper room, sharing with them some of the plainest and most intimate and most spiritually significant teaching of his entire earthly ministry. Now, many books have been written on what happened around the table that evening, but I want to draw your attention to just one part of that today. Chapter 13, starting with verse 31. When he'd gone out, that is when Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. By this, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Now, Jesus calls loving one another a new commandment. Why does he do that? After all, there's nothing new about the commandment to love one another. God's people had been instructed to love their neighbors, even their enemies, from all the way back in the first books of the Old Testament. But there is something different here, though, something new about the command to love as it is here in this context. Look closely at verse 34. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, 
you are to love one another. You see, what the Lord Jesus is doing and what he's about to do is to give the world an expression of love so profound, so perfect, that no one has ever seen love like this before in all of history. Not really. He's going to lay down his life for his disciples, uh, for all of his people. Uh, he's going to lay down his life for them physically, but far, far beyond that. He's going to willingly take their guilt, their condemnation for sin on himself. And in their place, he's going to endure the full wrath of God towards sinners. He's going to take hell on himself. Divine judgment, loss and pain beyond our ability to comprehend. He's going to be judged, consumed, destroyed for them as a sacrifice in their place. And why? He's going to do this because he loves them. And in going to the cross for them, he is going to love them in such a way that love itself is, in a sense, redefined by his love. And here's the new command. They are to love like that. Now, this is not just a command to be nice to each other. It's not just a command to, to, be, to be good to each other uh, when it's convenient for us. This is a command to become servants of one another, to become servants like the Lord Jesus became a servant, to make sacrifices for each other, to bear burdens for each other, to lay down our lives for each other, and to do so willingly, to do so eagerly even, and love for each other. That's the new commandment, to love one another as he has loved us. Now, consider that this evening. Consider, are you obeying that command? Are we obeying this new commandment? Are we loving each other like that, with that kind of love in our homes, Toward our family members, are we striving to really love one another by his definition? What about other folks in the church? What about our neighbors? Are we obeying our Lord's command to love as he has loved us? Again, not just to be nice to people, not just in a, in a general way to be kind, not just to avoid being rude, but to really proactively, even sacrificially, to put the needs of others before ourselves, to become servants of one another, and to love as he has loved us, willingly. And we have the commandment to do so. We have his example to do so, and his love. But even beyond that, we have the ability to do so, because our Lord has loved us with that kind of love already. Now, consider his great love for us, Consider his great love for you, his sacrificial service, his willingness to lay down his own life and to endure, to endure hell itself for you in love. When you did not deserve it, when you did not even appreciate it, that's what his love led him to do for you. And friends, in thinking on his love, let that grace be the fuel on the fire of your love for others. Now, tomorrow, we're going to consider his love even more. We're going to consider its, its full extent as we watch him go all the way to the cross in our place.